Is there anything more infuriating than getting back to your parked car and finding someone's hit you and is nowhere to be seen? Yes, yes there is. It's having an accident, knowing who the other party is, knowing that you can prove it wasn't your fault, but not being allowed to. Confused? Well, let me explain. Neve Bovel is stuck, not in this car park, but between two insurance companies, the police and Bunnings. A Bermuda Triangle of bureaucracy that could soon leave her carless. All because while she was reversing, someone else did the same. Because I was kind of already grumpy that he was continuing to pull out even though I was there. Neve says she stopped and honked. I held it down for about three seconds. It didn't help. First thing he says to me is that wasn't me. I had to explain to him the smash light on the floor, the little dent on his car that lined up with my smash light, and how his bumper lined up with my bumper. He then told me he didn't have insurance. The other driver says not so. I believe that we were both moving about the same. Well, I definitely told her that I had the insurance. No insurance would have been a dream scenario for Neve because when she got home and on the phone... It happened in the car park at Bunnings. Things got more complicated. If he was uninsured, then AMI would cover my car for free. But turns out the other driver did have third-party insurance. Good news, because although the damage wasn't serious, it was expensive. I've had a couple quotes done, and they're both around 1.7,000. And that's just from what they can see from the outside. There's always that chance that there's more damage underneath. Neve has just graduated, is working her first job as a hand therapist, and doesn't have $1,700 on hand. No, definitely not. But a nice student loan to pay off. A car's essential for a job. And with a warrant of fitness up in July, Neve needs results, fast. I've had a quick chat to VTNZ, and it will fail unfortunately, and if it fails, then I legally won't be allowed to drive it on the road. With liability disputed, Neve went back to Bunnings, where the fender bender happened. They had the crash on security camera. I thought it was a done deal, yeah. Not so fast. Bunnings wouldn't give her the footage. We can only release footage to the police. So she went to the police. Wasn't good news either. They don't normally investigate car park accidents as they're considered um, private property. Neve says the local sergeant gave her his email address as a place for Bunnings to send the footage, but still no. So she asked Bunnings again, quoting the Privacy Act, which says... People have the basic right to access information that is about themselves. This includes CCTV footage, but Bunnings said no. Again. As our standard practice and in accordance with our legal obligations, we only release CCTV footage under court order or at the police's formal request. There was still one slim hope. No, the closest thing I've got is a description from someone at Bunnings who's seen the footage describing what happens. A Bunnings employee had sent Neve an email with a description of what happens on the video. You start to reverse first, shortly after the other vehicle reverses. You are stopped for three seconds till the other vehicle hits you. Case closed. You'd think so. You'd think so. Third party with you guys. Neve's insurance company, AMI, initially offered to pay half, but once they read the description of the footage, they dropped the offer and told her... As you have third party cover, we will withdraw your claim and you can approach FMG Insurance directly. So, back to the phones. But I guess I'm also just a little bit over it. You know, I've spent months constantly calling. The other driver's insurer, FMG, was a no-go as well. They told Neve, Your story doesn't line up with our customers. And then that's when I said, there's video footage. Are you going to pursue that? And they said no. So to keep her car on the road, Neve needs the video footage. No one really wants to help. And time is running short. I think currently I'm just quite stressed about it all. Funny thing is, this could be you one day. So what if something happens to you and it's caught on someone else's security camera? Are you entitled to the footage? Well, despite Bunnings saying no, the law says yes. Privacy means the right uh, to make decisions about who knows personal information about you. New Zealand's Privacy Commissioner is Michael Webster. He says when it comes to privacy, individuals have one set of rules and organisations have another. Under the Privacy Act, we all have the ability to uh, request access to personal information uh, about ourselves that an agency has collected. Whereas... Individuals are not covered by the Privacy Act. 
So when my neighbour catches me admiring his house, he doesn't have to show or share the security footage with me. Nice build, but... Individuals, if they're operating security cameras, should operate them in a way that isn't frankly creepy. What about a company or organisation like Bunnings? Do they have to hand over all footage of you? Uh, individuals have the right to request access to personal information held about them uh, by agencies, yes. Right, but do they have to release it? Unless they can um, uh, uh, determine that there are grounds for withholding uh, that are set out in the Act itself. Bunnings says they withheld the footage to protect the privacy of the driver who hit Neve. They didn't ask me. It put his privacy interests in front of hers, even though she could lose her car if she doesn't have the footage. The Privacy Commission recommend blurring or editing the footage as a compromise. Bunnings were not interested in this. We checked in with other big retailers. Most say they take a case-by-case -case approach. None of them require a police request or a court order to release footage. And the police tell us a formal request from them it's just not necessary. Police are not usually required to give permission for a private property owner to release footage for purposes such as these. We asked Bunnings about their policy and questioned if it was violating the Privacy Act. They are firm. Our general approach is to only release footage at the police's formal request or under a court order. This is especially relevant where other people are identified. We appreciate the customer's frustration and have advised that we are willing and ready to cooperate with police on request. Luckily, after we rang around the insurance companies, they got talking and FMG now says they're going to cover your claim and pay for your car to be fixed. Oh, that's amazing. Such a relief. Thank you. FMG says they had the information to approve the claim for a month, but were busy with Cyclone Gabrielle. We needed to prioritise our most vulnerable clients who have lost their homes and livelihoods. That said, we apologise this type of claim took longer than it normally would for us. So Neve can stay behind the wheel. You can keep your car on the road. That's, that's great. While giving her fingers a long-awaited rest. So, just to sum up what you experienced over the last mm. seven and a half minutes of your life, Bunnings won't release the footage unless they say they get a police request. The police are like, we're not requesting this. We don't even deal with these sort of things. It's just crazy. People are just trying to get on with their life. Let's all just get on with our lives. Let's do that. I need to ring talk back. <laughs>